hello everyone and welcome to my channel today I'm going to focus on the molecular orbitals of the second period elements as we look at the bonding orbitals and antibonding orbitals formation from the 2p orbitals which are atomic orbitals so first the formation of the sigma 2p molecular orbitals will be evaluated in this case. This is as a result of the addition of the two 2p orbitals that are in phase and are placed along the internuclear axis of the two atoms that are coming closer together. So this is shown graphically as follows here. So in this part when I label my axis where all pieces Z, Y and X axis now we're going to look at the 2px molecular or atomic orbitals of the two atoms as they come together. Note here the way I shaded the two lobes here. In here I have a lobe that is blue and here is red and here is blue here is red. Once these guys come together at a particular internuclear axis which is positioned at this particular symmetry here what you realize is that both of them are coming in phase what do I mean in phase positive or blue and blue is coming together we can also call it as positive and positive are coming together not negative and positive coming together so as they get closer together they form this particular big huge electron density between the two nuclei. This here, so this new huge electron density here results in a new molecular orbital being formed, which is called the sigma 2p molecular orbital. Now, this molecular orbital produces electron density between the nuclei in an head-to-head -head recombination thereby forming this particular chemical bond which is a sigma 2p chemical bond however these same 2p orbitals here can be positioned in a different way they can, they can be positioned in an out of phase situation and what do I mean out of phase situation what that means is that this out of phase situation will involve a recombination where the two atomic orbitals are positioned in the other way let's say one of this particular um, atom here flips the face here in such a way that red stays here and blue moves to the other side so what that results here is that these two atomic orbitals are in out of phase and what that results in is a non-bonding or an sorry not a non-bonding an anti-bonding case where you generate a particular nodal plane in between the two atomic um, elements here so this is another form of molecular orbital that is formed here and this atomic orbital is quite higher in any uh, this molecular orbital formed here are high, higher in energy than the in phase recombination molecular orbital which is was shown previously here 
So the same two p orbitals positioned in an out of phase produces an antibonding orbitals produces a sigma star two p molecular orbital which is expressed generally as a nodal plane that is perpendicular to the internuclear axis. So the nodal plane is a region with the zero probability density of electrons as it's shown here. So that's about it for the out of phase. Secondly, two two p orbitals perpendicular to the internuclei axis forms the high 2p or written as this molecular orbital where the electron density produced contributes to the multiple chemical bond which could either be a double or a triple bonding case as we'll see later on in this particular segment here this is shown below alongside the antibonding case so in this case here when we label our axis as a z x and y we're not going to be focusing on the x because we've already dealt with the x where the atomic orbitals are positioned in the internuclear axis but in this case here what you're trying to look at are atomic orbitals that are perpendicular to the internuclear axis and what does that result that results in a side recombination of the in phases of the two atomic orbitals to form this particular symmetrical pi 2p either z or y recombination so you note here that there is no form of a uh, node plane there's no there's no nodal plane in this particular case here how this is for the bonding case which forms the bonding molecular orbital. However, we have the antibonding case where this guy here is flipped in such a way that the negative comes up and the positive comes down. And this results in an anti well, antibonding case, or I would say an antibonding pi star 2pz or y case where. In between the two the nuclei, what we have is a nodal plane. So note here that this is much lower in energy than that here. And note here that there are two of these that will be formed, one from the Y and the other from the Z. Now looking at the properties. Now we're going to look at the properties of the discussed molecular orbitals. First, we have to note that the sigma type bonding orbital, let me just put the O here, is lower in energy than the pi type bonding process here and this is because there is a head-to-head -head overlap of the 2p orbitals that is more extensive than the side-to-side -side overlap so this is more it's much easier to form a head-to-head -head recombination compared to that of the side-to-side -side recombination side to side recombination will create some kind of a strain but head to head recombination causes less strain that is why the energy required for we to form the sigma type bonding is 
much more lower than that of the side to side type which were the y and z case compared to just the x case therefore the energy diagram for the molecular orbital <coughs> for the molecular orbital of elements in period 2 with a atomic number greater than 8 is shown here so in this case here we have a diagram which shows the formation of the molecular orbitals between two atoms that are eight or above in terms of the atomic numbers so in here we have the 1s of the two atoms coming together to form the regular sigma 1s and sigma 1s star which is the antibonding case then if we move to a higher energy then we introduce the 2p and the 2 2p's and the 2s's now 2s is much lower in energy than the 3 2 d3 three degenerates 2p orbitals and what that results first is that the two S orbitals from the two atoms they recombine in order to form two sigma two p axes of which one of them is bonding and the other is antibonding because S is spherical so we have this being formed and the antibonding will have a node in between the in phase and out of phase molecular orbitals that has been formed here so next one let me just zoom in yeah so in the next case here what we have now is the two p orbitals and i know this is kind of sketchy but I'm just going to explain myself properly here so in here we have the this x y and z recombining together and now the axis is much lower in energy than the y and the z molecular orbitals so what does that result in we'll get a sigma 2p x being formed and generating this particular symmetry which is quite similar to that of the sigma 2s so the sigma 2p x will be from this particular geometrical electro density which is much lower in energy than the pi 2p y and z molecular orbitals which are formed by a side to side recombination so in here we have the 2py which is formed at the horizontal position and we have the 2pz which is formed at a vertical position so for each of these guys that are being formed in the bonding we also have the antibonding case which is indicated by the stars at the top here so in here we have the antibonding with another plane for the sigma 2p x then we have the degenerate 2p y 2p z for the pi antibonding orbitals so you can note here that due to the in phase and out of phase case here we generate another plane here and that for the y we have another plane which cut across over there however the energy diagram for molecular orbitals of elements in period 2 with atomic orbitals that is less than or equal to 7 
let me write it here that is less than or equal to 7 like let's say for example carbon 2 is shown here so in this case here now the same symmetrical formation is being formed for the for both cases but the only difference here is that due to the lower uh, to a lower energy there is a possibility for an sp mixing and we'll talk about that later on so what i'm trying to say here is that sp mixing will occur in the 1s case but once you get to the 2s what happens is that the 2s will mix with the two one of the two piece because due to the symmetry um that is similar to the um sigma 2px and that of the sigma 2s case here because the symmetry here are quite similar so since the symmetry here are quite similar and they are closer in energy there is a possibility for an xp mixing and what that results in is a higher an increase in the energy of the sigma 2px compared to the pi 2py's and pi 2pz but this one here will be elevated higher in energy than the rest here so in this case with such a small atomic size the molecular orbital of the sigma 2s and the sigma 2px are similar in symmetry and energy that they mix to modify the sigma 2p which makes it higher in energy than the pi 2p degenerate molecular orbitals so that is it for this video thanks for watching hit the like button subscribe and share have a brilliant day